Hello everyone. In this video, we will talk about recursion. First, let's turn on Python. Okay. What is recursion? Recursion is the process of a function calling itself to do a smaller version of the task that a function does. What do I mean by that? Let's say we have a directory, a folder. And inside that folder, we have three smaller folders. And each of those folders has three more smaller folders. Three folders will also have their own smaller folders. That is called recursion. After every single recursion, we're getting a new branch. That's what recursion does. A f when a function recursively calls itself, we will get a branch, a new branch. That will create a tree. Why do we need recursion? Well, for patterns that require a specific instruction that a for loop or while loop can't do, it is best to use recursion. There are some disadvantages but uh, I will discuss those later. So let's first start with a program, a simple program. Let's create a function that gives us the nth Fibonacci number. Inside, we will have an if statement. So if n is less than or equal to 1, inside we should return n. What is n? Well, n is the input we get from the function. And also, why do we need this if statement? In case we enter a number, that could be the first two Fibonacci numbers, which are 0 and 1, it will just return those numbers. And in case it, if we enter a negative number by accident, it will just return that. Note that the Fibonacci numbers is the list of numbers where the current number is the sum of the previous two numbers. Let's continue. So let's set t equal to Fibonacci, the function, of n minus 1 plus Fibonacci of n minus 2. The previous two numbers and then let's return t now let's save this because we want to run it okay now let's call the function and see what we get Fifty-five. I entered 10 and 55 is the 10th Fibonacci number. However, as fast as this program can do, it's actually very inefficient. Why? Because to get to the nth Fibonacci number, it always has to recursively call itself. That means for every recursion call, we end up creating the previous numbers again. That means we end up creating the previous numbers which we already created over and over and over again. That's the problem. We can see this if we enter 40 instead of 10. It's taking a while. That's because for every recursion call, it has to be creating the previous numbers because it does not know what those are. It's not as if we also send those to it as well. So how do we fix this? We use what is called memoization. The, not to be confused with memorization. Memoization is the process of the computer remembering the stuff that it did earlier. As if the computer was leaving a memo of what it did. How do we do that? Let's first create a function 
fib 2. Now inside we need a base case stored in a list. So that is fib list equal to 0 and 1, the first two Fibonacci numbers. Next, we use a for loop. So, for i in range 2, comma, n plus 1, we want that n as well, we append a value to feed list. This time, we don't call the function, but we get the list. So, feed list of element i minus 1, plus feebles of i minus 2. That way we can get the previous two elements. For the third number, those first two elements will be 0 and 1, our initial base case. In the end, after that for loop, we return feebles of n, the n Fibonacci number. Now let's run it. First, let's put 10. We got 55. Same as the previous function, meaning they are correct. This time, let's enter 40. Oh, we got that big number, but on top of that, we actually got it really fast compared to the first function. There's one thing I need you to note when programming with recursion. And that is, there's actually a limit where the program can recurse or repeat. For every recursion, it creates a stack of memory in the stack section of your computer. There's a limit to how many stacks you can have, just like there's a limit to how many books you can keep in a box. Well, for general, generally, the limit is 1,000, but that will vary from computer to computer. But the point is that if you exceed the stack, if you try adding more books to the box where the box is already full, you'll get what is called a stack overflow, which makes sense, right? Because if you continue adding books to a box that's already full, the books won't go inside. They'll just keep on stacking outside on top of the box. In Python, that's a really, really bad error, which is why it stops before something bad happens. So it is always best to note that if you need to do something that repeats, it is best to do recursion as long as the recursion does not need a huge number. If you do need a huge number, memoization is the best option. So thank you for watching this video and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.